Hey guys, let's get more news about Steelers, but first, don't forget to subscribe and leave your like. Proposed bold trade see Steelers ship RB to AFC foe. Rosters around the NFL are largely ready for week one of the 2024 season. But there will be plenty of roster shuffling as the season goes, including perhaps a few blockbuster trades. Bleacher reports Alex Ballantyne proposed one of those big trades could involve one of the top two running backs, Najee Harris and Jalen Warren from the Pittsburgh Steelers. On August 31st, Ballantyne included the Steelers trading either Harris or Warren to the Kansas City Chiefs on his list of bold trade predictions for the 2024 season. It's no secret the running back position has been devalued, Ballantyne wrote. But if the Chiefs believe that adding another talented back could put them over the top in their quest to three-peat as champions, then it would be worth it to them. Notable trade targets that could make sense include either of the Pittsburgh Steelers running backs Jalen Warren and or Najee Harris. Both are set to become free agents after this season, and it's unlikely the Steelers pay both of them. Ballantyne predicted this trade to occur after the Steelers' struggle early in the season. In Ballantyne's proposal, the Steelers become sellers close to the 2024 season midpoint. For that to happen, they will have to fall out of the race before Halloween. It's difficult to predict what the Steelers will do if that occurs because it's rarely happened. The last time they didn't finish with at least a .500 record was 2003. But in 2022, the Steelers started the season 2-6 and then dealt receiver Chase Claypool at the trade deadline. So, there's recent history to suggest the Steelers could move a player still on their rookie deal during the season. However, the Claypool trade could have been a special case. Looking back at the trade two years later, he was clearly addition by subtraction. The Chicago Bears also made the absurd offer of a second-round pick for the young receiver, making it a trade the Steelers couldn't refuse. Even then, the Steelers didn't trade him to another team in the same conference. The Steelers have not made signing any of their current players to contract extensions a priority this offseason. But now that a potential trade for Brandon Ayak is dead, the team could work to sign a few of their veterans to new deals. Steelers Depot's Matthew Marksy argued that tight end Pat Fryermuth is the first player who needs an extension, followed by defensive end Cameron Hayward. But he didn't rule out an extension for Harris. The Pittsburgh Post-Gazette's Jerry Dulock went further in early May, predicting an extension for Harris. Dulock made that prediction even after the Steelers declined the running back's fifth-year option. I think the idea will be to give him a new contract, a two-year contract, and somewhere along the line, that type of money that he was missing out on, Dulock said on the end zone on Sirius XM NFL Radio, via Steelers Depot. I think that's what they're going to do. They are not ready to give up on Najee Harris or move on from Najee Harris. Now, if that's the case, that doesn't mean Warren couldn't then be a trade chip at the midseason point. But if Harris doesn't sign a new deal before week one, the Steelers could keep both backs through the season and then attempt to sign one of them to an extension during the offseason. The other thing to keep in mind is Mike Tomlin's record of turning around his teams after bad starts. After the Claypool trade, the Steelers finished the season 7-2. That's why the Steelers will have to be completely out of the playoff picture to be sellers. Even then, the Chiefs may have to make an enticing offer for the Steelers to depart with either Harris or Warren. Bills face unknown over status of key player on offense. The Buffalo Bills are heading into the start of the 2024 season with a big question mark behind Josh Allen. Backup quarterback Mitch Trubisky suffered a knee injury in the team's preseason win over the Pittsburgh Steelers on August 17 and was held out of the final preseason game. The Bills went on to add two veteran quarterbacks for the remainder of the preseason, Ben DiNucci and Anthony Brown, but released both ahead of the roster deadline and instead signed former New York Jets quarterback Mike White. It's not clear whether Trubisky will be back in time, USA Today's Nick Woyton noted. Woyton noted that Trubisky's status remains unknown with one week left until the season opener against the Arizona Cardinals. 
while he was able to return to practice this week, Trubisky could still face limitations, Wojten noted. However, it's not just that cut and dry with Trubisky's return to practice, Wojten wrote. Trubisky returned during a limited time period when the media was able to watch practice. It seems possible that after that, Trubisky did not do much. Wojten added that Trubisky was spotted still wearing a large brace on his leg at practice this week. The bill signed Trubisky this offseason after a two-year stint with the Steelers, where he initially won the starting job in the 2022 season before being replaced by rookie Kenny Pickett. Trubisky served as Allen's backup in Buffalo during the 2021 season and was well-liked by the team's coaching staff. Even if he is able to return in time for the season opener, Trubisky could face competition for his job as the team's number two. The veteran quarterback struggled in the team's first two preseason games before suffering the injury, leading some analysts to suggest the Bills could look for a replacement. WGR 550 reporter Joe DiBiase suggested after the preseason win over the Steelers that the Bills could bring in veteran free agent Ryan Tannehill to back up Allen. If no starting job becomes available to him via injury, Ryan Tannehill would be a significant upgrade for the Bills at backup QB, DiBiase shared on X, this is a three-win football team if Trubisky had to play. Tannehill has been open about the idea of returning to the NFL, but said in a July appearance on the Scoop City podcast that he wants to wait for the right opportunity. Right now, I think it's going to depend on situation, Tannehill said. At this point, I've been blessed to play 12 years and be where I'm at, so I'm not just going to continue to add years to add years. I want to be in a situation that I feel really good about. I'm not ruling anything out, but it's going to have to be the right situation for me and my family. The Bills could also elevate White to serve as Allen's backup. White has started seven games in his NFL career, completing 62.6% .6 of his passes in his career for 2,219 yards and nine touchdowns with 13 interceptions. Steelers named Dak Prescott option. The Pittsburgh Steelers aren't involved in the quarterback market anymore, but likely will be again come next offseason. And while Russell Wilson and Justin Fields remain two of their top options for 2025, one NFL insider is tossing out another name that could be in the mix. Most of the NFL world is watching and the Dallas Cowboys and quarterback Dak Prescott battle it out in hopes of finding middle ground in a contract extension. Things have become strained, and as both sides continue to speak on the matter publicly, it seems as if tensions are growing. The biggest issue when it comes to a tough situation, or this tough situation, seems to be Cowboys owner and general manager Jerry Jones, who continues to take his thoughts on the negotiations to the media. So, NFL insider Mike Florio believes a change of scenery could be on the mind of the quarterback, and the Steelers are the easiest option to avoid the drama. Would they pay Dak market value? Here's the thing about free agency. Dak could choose to go to a team and a coach for less than market value, Florio said in his list of options for Prescott. After having Jerry Jones try to persuade him for years to take less than he could get elsewhere, Dak could stick it to the Cowboys by choosing to take less from one of their biggest AFC rivals. The Steelers will evaluate their two quarterbacks throughout the season, and Wilson and Fields will remain their easiest choices for a starter next year. But if Prescott becomes available, maybe Pittsburgh looks to make another splash in 2025. One that will come with a larger price tag than their current two, but is viewed a little higher than those already on the roster. And you fan? What do you think of the situation of D.A.K. Prescott? Leave your opinion in the comments.